back once again, everyone. Today, I have the privilege of being joined by uh, Loni Chavis. He is the star of the upcoming film, The Waterman. Uh, Loni, thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. So what was it like for you to, to be the star of a film? Definitely a lot of compliments. Um, <laughs> it's definitely different for me to be the lead and, you know, me, me to... I mean, I've been, I've been called so many times a leading man, and honestly, I don't even think I did that good. I feel like Mr. David Oyelowo really set a tone on this movie. Well, I mean, uh, although we see David as well in the film with you, which we'll get into a little bit later, you, we do see you. You're, it's your emotions. It's your portrayal of Gunner that we see. Uh, so congratulations on your role. I, I thought it was a fantastic film. Thank you so much. And, and, you know, uh, it, I, it's interesting because it's not just me that thinks that as well. Currently, you, you have a, over a, over a, almost a dozen reviews. And right now on Rotten Tomato, you're over 90 percent. How, how does that feel? Awesome. I feel so blessed. Honestly, I feel so blessed. What, what's been the biggest difference for you in, in some of the other roles you've done and now having to be the focal point of a film? Honestly, this role was really different from the other ones that I've done because this one challenged me as an actor. Like, for example, there was this one scene. Um, it was a log scene where it was it was a log that I had to climb on top of. I mean, I didn't climb on top of it, to be to be sure, being safe. I did not climb on top of the log, all right? But I had to act like I was going to climb on top of it. And it was, it was actually really high up, and I had a fear of heights at the time. And I was having lots of difficulty with the scene. So my mom, she tried to calm me down. She couldn't really calm me down. And then Mr. David had stepped in and then he brought me to the mindset of why Gunner is doing this. He's doing this for all the love and the passion that he has for his mom. It's an interesting point. There's a lot of little things right there that I want to get into, but let's start with that. Uh, for Gunner and for, and for kids all over, do you think there's anything they wouldn't do for their parents if they knew that their, their mom or dad was in that dire situation? I feel like anybody would do something for who they love. I mean, I would and I know you would too. Absolutely. And I, I think that your character is set up in a very special way. Uh, do, you, do, do you enjoy uh, graphic novels, comics? I actually draw myself, but I actually wasn't familiar with the art in the past, but they brought a graphic artist to come in and actually teach me how to, you know, draw a graphic. It was, it was actually really cool. And he gave me some tips that I still use to this day. Nice. But what I, what I mean by it is, uh, I, I feel that sometimes people who, who kind of who like that kind of genre, the pop culture, the superheroes, sometimes are able to to embody a little bit more hope. And, and I see that in your character, because as soon as you kind of you learn a little bit more about about your mom's condition, you study it up and, and, and you go on a journey. And it seems like that, like the log scene that, that really show audiences he's willing to go the extra mile, the distance. Super far, yeah. To, to make sure to make sure it, it, it all works out. Um, then you also spoke about uh, David on Yale, who also plays your dad in the film. Uh, tell me what it was like working with him. It was amazing. Okay, on the first day, I remember he brought us all together in a circle and we prayed for the first time uh, on the set together. And he said that we're all gonna do this with love. We're gonna treat everybody with kindness. We're gonna be respectful. And that's exactly what we did throughout the whole film. He honestly really set a tone on the set. And you think it would be hard for somebody who was an actor and a director to play in a movie because he has to worry about the camera angles, he has to worry about other people's mm -hmm. lines, why worry about his lines, their makeup, his makeup, blah, 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 blah. But Mr. David never, ever bumped the transition. He made it like a walk in the park for him, honestly. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad he made you feel that way. What are your biggest takeaways from working with him? Some maybe lessons that you're going to carry on? some lessons that I'm going to carry on. Um, you know, he taught me to be a leading man, not to be a follower, not to do what everybody else is doing, just say to you. And, and what is that to you? What is the difference between being a follower and a leading man? The difference between being a follower, like, let's say, let's say, um, let's say you, for instance, let's say your friends, they're going out to eat, blah, 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 blah. They're going to this huge party that might be trouble us. They're doing stuff that's illegal. And you want to follow them because that's what everybody else is doing. No, just stay to yourself, honestly. Yeah, you, you, you need to be, quote unquote, the leader, not a follower. Good answer. I appreciate that. How about, uh, let's get into Gunner. Tell us a little bit about Gunner and, and what audiences could expect from him in, in the film. 
Well, Gunner is a smart, artistic kid who is afraid and not afraid at the same time. It's an interesting, uh, you know, fear is good, right? It, as long as you have a healthy fear, I feel like it's good. But I, I think that based on his, his, you know, his love for exploration and his love for his family, you're, you're able to overcome it. We talked a little bit about that. Now you have a, uh, a co-star, uh, Amaya Miller, Joe. Uh, what was that chemistry like on and off set? Me and her had so much fun in between takes. We literally talked about the dumbest things. <laughs> it was just, it was just so much fun working with Amaya. And honestly, her and Miss Rosario and David, I have never seen three people that can laugh so much. But then when somebody says action, they just go straight to character. <laughs> honestly, she's a great actor and a great person. I love Amaya. It, it really sounds like you had a great time on set. Uh, following up on something we talked a little bit earlier it, is. Do you aspire to do more of that like David does now where acting and directing in your future? Is that something maybe you see? Yeah, he definitely inspired me to be a director a little bit. I, th I think that, you know, I kind of want to play on both sides, yeah. Uh, what kind of film would you be interested in directing? What stuff like this, this honestly really challenged me as an actor, really pushed my limits. And I feel like I'm definitely better than I was before the movie. What, what kind of roles are you looking to get into next? 100% what I just said. <laughs> yeah, I just said. <laughs> was like, it pushed me more as an actor, 100%. Yeah, that, it's a great answer. What What do you hope audiences take away from The Waterman? There's a lot to take away, really. Um, how to identify with, really. You know, this movie identifies with hope, faith, love, sacrificial love, family, friendship. And I hope that audiences take away to not take time for granted. Lonnie, thank you so much. Time is a key. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you your, so your answers. Uh, good luck with your next role and your next one. And then hopefully we get to talk to you again on those. And then sometime in the future in your direct directorial debut. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, man. All right. Thanks.